Hello everyone and welcome to a new lecture. In this video we're going to talk about the domain and range of secant, cosecant and cotangent. Okay, so we will start with cotangent because finding the domain and range of cotangent is very similar to tangent and just before this lecture the last thing we talked about was cotangent. Okay, so what is the domain and range of cotangent? Well, let's graph cotangent. This is the graph of cotangent of x. Okay, so as you can see, it resembles the graph of tangent of x, however, it is flipped. So the graph of tangent of x, so tan of x, looks like this. Okay, so we know that the domain and range of tangent of x, so let's change this into this one. We know that the domain and range of tangent of x, so if we start with the range, the range is all the real numbers, and the domain is all the real numbers, except those values that we have vertical asymptotes. So at pi over 2 plus or minus n pi, we have vertical asymptotes, except those x, the domain is all the real numbers. Okay, And we saw that how if we temper with the x, we will have different domains, but the range will stay the same. Okay, but if we have vertical shifting, okay, up and down, nothing will happen to the domain. Okay, and the range will still be the real numbers. Okay, the same applies for cotan. Okay, so cotan of x, the domain is all the real numbers except those values that we have vertical asymptotes. Okay, and the range is all the real numbers. So as you can see, if I take this point and go up, as you can see, the y of it, since it is the range, it goes up, 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 up toward positive infinity, and if I come down, it comes down, down, down toward negative infinity. However, the domain is between two values, okay, since we have a vertical asymptote right here, and we have a vertical asymptote right here, okay? The vertical asymptotes of cotan is all those x's that equal to pi plus or minus n pi. So at x equaling to pi, we have a vertical asymptote, okay, so plus or minus 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, I get the other vertical asymptote, so if I add this to another pi, I'll get this vertical asymptote, if I subtract a pi from it, I'll get this vertical asymptote, so the vertical asymptotes for cotan are at x equaling to pi plus or minus n pi, okay, very, very easy. So the same goes for cotan, the same rule that apply to tangent. If we have vertical shifting, if we go up and down, nothing really happens to the domain of the function. Okay, so if you have cotan of x minus 1, still the domain is all the real numbers except those values that we have vertical asymptotes, and the range is all the real numbers. Okay, if I multiply cotan by 2, Still, this is the case, okay? Still, the domain is all the real numbers except those values that I have vertical asymptotes, and the range is all the real numbers. However, when I temper with the x of the function, okay, so if I evaluate different x's into cotan, I'll have different domains, okay? And the range is still all the real numbers, okay? So if I multiply this by, okay, the domain is no longer, okay, x equaling to all the real numbers except those values that I have pi plus or minus n pi. And let's see if that's the case. So at x equaling to pi, let's see if I have a vertical asymptote. No, I don't. Okay, so I no longer have the vertical asymptotes to be at x equaling to pi plus or minus n pi. Since I tempered with the x, I have it at different x values. Okay, and the domain therefore has changed. Okay, so in the same way that we found the domain of tangent, we find the domain of cotangent, okay? We find the values of the vertical asymptotes, we take it away or we exclude it from the real numbers, that will be the domain of the cotangent. So here we have 1 over 2x, if you equal 1 over 2x by pi plus or minus n pi, and then if you remove the 1 over 2 from the x, then you will have x equaling to 2 times pi plus or minus n pi, okay, 2 times everything, okay, that will be the vertical asymptotes, okay, if you exclude that from the real numbers, you will have the domain of this function, so you will have something like that, x equaling to 2 times, let's remove this, 2 times pi plus or minus n pi, okay, 
at these values we will have the vertical asymptotes. So let's try it. Let's have pi plus 1 pi. Let's see if we have a vertical asymptote at this point. Okay, let's see what it is. Yeah, we do have a vertical asymptote. If we change this pi to 2, we have the next vertical asymptote to 3. So we are changing the n, okay, the natural number. If I have this to be minus, I have the vertical asymptotes, okay? So in the same way that we found the domain of tangent, we find the domain of cotangent. We find the values of x that we have vertical asymptotes. We exclude from the real numbers. That will be the domain. To find the range, well, the range is simple. It's all the real numbers, okay? So that's it about domain and range of cotangent, okay? And we're going to solve a couple of problems when we go to the drawing boards. However, this is about the domain and range of cotangent, okay? How about domain and range of secant and cosecant? So let's delete this. We will start with cosecant, so C is C of x, okay? So this is the graph of cosecant of x. Let's extract information from it regarding domain and range, okay? So it seems like, let's zoom in a little bit, the domain of this function is all the real numbers except those values that we have vertical asymptotes, okay? So for cosecant, we know that we have the vertical asymptotes at x equaling to pi plus or minus n pi. So for example, at x equaling to pi, we have a vertical asymptote. If we add or subtract this from n pi, n being a natural number, we get the other vertical asymptotes. So if you exclude x equaling to pi plus or minus n pi from the real numbers, you will get the domain of this function, okay? The range is all the real numbers except between those values that are between 1 and minus 1. And the reason is, so if I have sine of x, okay, the reciprocal of sine of x is cosecant of x, okay? So we said that at those values that are between the vertical asymptotes, if I flip the function of sine, I'll get cosecant, okay? So let me change this. Okay, I'll get cosecant. So I don't have any value of cosecant in the area that I have sine. Okay, that's why the cosecant of x, the range of it, is all the real numbers except those values that are between 1 and minus 1. Okay, except this region that I have the sine function. Okay, so I'm telling you this because if I multiply a 2 or a constant by cosecant, the range changes. Okay, so if I multiply this by 2, this has the same effect if I multiply sine by 2. And if I multiply sine by 2, the amplitude changes, the range changes, so the minimum and maximum value change. So the minimum and maximum value is no longer 1 and minus 1, they are 2 and minus 2. And the range is everything between including 2 and minus 2. That is why when I multiply cosecant of x by 2, the range is no longer all the real numbers except those values that are between 1 and minus 1. Now it is all the real numbers except those values that are between 2 and minus 2. Okay, I'm showing you this so you see it visually what happens to domain and range of these functions when I temper with it. Okay, so you have an idea how to find the domain and range. Okay, so if I multiply a constant by cosecant of x, okay, the domain is still all the real numbers except those values that I have vertical asymptotes. As you can see at this blue okay, line, I have a vertical asymptote at x equaling to pi. Okay? However, the range becomes all the real numbers except those values that are between 2 and minus 2. Okay? And we're going to solve problems. You will see how easy it is to find domain and range. Okay? So that is about multiplication cosecant by a constant. How about if I subtract? So let's say everything subtracted or added, okay, from, let's say, a constant, from 4, okay? Well, again, the range changes, okay? So when I temper with the whole function, okay, so when I multiply it by a constant or I subtract it or add it from a constant, what happens is the range changes. When I temper with the x of the function, the domain changes, 
Okay, so if I subtract 4, that means the whole function has come down by 4 units. Okay, so the range is no longer all the real numbers except those values that are between 2 and minus 2. Now it is all the real numbers except those values that are between minus 2 and minus 6. Okay, you see it visually what happens. Okay, so that is about subtraction and addition to the function. That is about multiplication. What happens if I temper with the x, if I change this x to, let's say, 2x? Well, the range will be the same, okay? However, the domain changes. So the domain changes because the place of the vertical asymptotes are no longer at those values, okay? So for here, even though here we have a vertical asymptote, however, the vertical asymptotes are at 2x equaling to pi plus or minus n pi. So that means they are at pi over 2, okay? Plus or minus n over 2 pi. Okay, so if I add this, so for example, to pi over 2, I will get the next vertical asymptote. So n right here is the natural number, and we have a plus or minus right here, okay, for or instead of this plus, okay? So the same way that we found the domain of cotangent and tangent, we find the domain of cosecant, okay? I think you have a very good idea. So that's about domain and range of cosecant. How about domain and range of secant? So let's delete all this. Well, secant of x, this is the graph of it, okay? And the function that creates secant is cosine, okay? Cosine of x. If we flip, so let's change this to black and this. Let's change this to red, okay? If we flip cosine of x at those values that are not the vertical asymptotes, we will get secant of x, okay? So what is the domain, what is the range of secant of x? Well, the domain is all the real numbers except those values that we have vertical asymptotes, the same as cosecant, okay? What is the range? Well, the range is all the real numbers except those values that are between 1 and minus 1. Okay, between 1 and minus 1. Okay, so we have the vertical asymptotes at pi over 2 plus or minus n pi. So x equaling to pi over 2. Okay, we have vertical asymptotes plus or minus n pi. We have the other vertical asymptotes. So that means if I temper with the x of the function, the place of the vertical asymptotes changes. Okay, therefore the domain changes. If I temper with the whole function, so if I multiply this by 2, or 3, or 4, or 1 over 2, 1 over 3, 1 over 4, or if I subtract or add a certain value from this, the range changes, okay? And finding the range is very, very easy. We're going to see that in the next lecture, okay? So this is about the domain and range of secant, cosecant, and cotangent, okay? So let's go to the drawing board, and let's solve a couple of problems.